More than two months after Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, the war rages on. Yesterday, President Biden said he is concerned that Russian leader Vladimir Putin, quote, doesn't have a way out, end quote, and will continue his brutal war in an attempt to save face at home. But even Russian state television is acknowledging the Kremlin's humiliations. Meanwhile, as Moscow's special operation in Ukraine continues to be an embarrassment for Putin on the international stage and increasingly at home, China is taking notes and likely adjusting its long-term plans for gaining control of Taiwan based on the lessons from the war in Ukraine, as CIA Director Bill Burns recently highlighted. So what might China be gleaning from Russia's stalled invasion? Here to uh, talk about this with me is China expert Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. He can be found on Twitter at Gordon G. Chang. Gordon, welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Thank you so much, Tony. So in what ways is the Russia, Ukraine and China, Taiwan situation similar and in what ways are they different? Well, Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, has taken away a lot of lessons, some of them emboldening him, some of them inhibiting him. I think the most important lesson he learned, though, was that despite the overwhelming superiority of um, Russia's enemies, we were not able to prevent Vladimir Putin from invading Ukraine. There was a failure of deterrence, the worst since the Second World War. I think Xi Jinping looks at that and says, look, in Western diplomacy and especially American diplomacy is not working. Now, of course, there are a lot of other lessons, but I think that that's the most dangerous one that he learned. Did the, unif the unifying approach, the transatlantic alliance, in terms of the economic sanction, which has put a little bit of a squeeze on the Russian economy, has that gotten his attention? I think that it has. He's probably been a little bit surprised. But nonetheless, the Chinese believe that unlike the Russians, they are integral to the global economy and that countries would not sanction him. And there have been a number of voices in Beijing, especially over the last week or so, to that effect, which basically means that the Chinese may have an exaggerated sense of their own importance. Now, what's important and what's true is not important. What is important is what the Chinese, in effect, believe. And so I think that we've got to be extremely concerned that they could take us by surprise because they believe that they can do what they want. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, because President Biden says his administration is discussing uh, eliminating the tariffs on the Chinese products that uh, the Trump administration put in place. So if, if we take that step at this point, showing that we're more concerned about getting lower prices at Walmart than we are about national security, um, that wouldn't be sending the right message, I would think. Certainly not. And, and that's one of the reasons why the Chinese are pretty arrogant, because they believe that although the United States, by the metrics, is far more powerful than China, they believe that they've got political will and we don't. So, for instance, when we take measures that help Beijing and don't help us, they look at the United States and say, well, we don't have to worry about those guys. Yeah, they got more ships and more planes and they've got a more capable military, but they won't fight. And this is the reason why wars start, because countries tend to um, misperceive the capabilities and the intentions of their adversaries. I mean, it, certainly it's easier to run a country if you're a dictator than if you are the president of a, uh, a very diverse republic like ours, where the, Xi Jinping doesn't care what his people think if they're paying uh, or they don't have anything to buy. Of course, that's a big difference here in the United States where people stand for real legitimate uh, elections. So let me just ask you, Gordon, this question. How do you think the U.S. and the rest of the world would react if and when China invades Taiwan? That's a great question. I think that eventually the United States would come to the aid of Taiwan. Um, if we go back and we look at, for instance, um, Korea before the Korean War, Dean Acheson, Secretary of State, actually publicly drew America's Western defense perimeter, which did not include South Korea. And that persuaded um, the Russians, the Chinese, and the North Koreans that they could invade. Same thing about uh, Saddam Hussein in 1990, where our ambassador actually told Saddam Hussein, uh, look, we have no interest in intra-Arab disputes, as we put it. And eight days later, uh, Iraq invaded Kuwait. 
Um, and of course, we came to both the defense of South Korea and Kuwait. Um, we probably could see the same dynamic occur. Um, this is just a failure, though, of policy. With clear statements, we could have avoided, we could yeah. have avoided these wars. Yeah, the words matter. And when our leaders are saying, you know, a little incursion, we're not going to be too concerned about that, uh, th that is an open door for what we saw unfolding in Ukraine. Absolutely. Um, and we cannot afford to have war on both ends of the Eurasian landmass and perhaps in North Africa at the same time. And we're seeing Russia, China and their proxies um, could very well act in tandem. Um, so this is a situation where war could spread from Ukraine, both east and west across the Eurasian landmass and to other places around the world. Uh, Gordon, the music is starting, means we're out of time. But very quickly, when you gauge the situation in terms of the threat from China and the volatility, where are we on a scale of one to ten? If ten is the most dangerous, I think we're probably at eight and a half, moving fast to nine. Okay. Well, we're going to stay close in touch with you so we can get the latest uh, as things develop there. Gordon Chang, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today on Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony.